the strength of your project or weakness of the project or whatever they would like to discuss. Maybe you could copy the, for example, all the strings, yeah. uh, put them uh, at the beginning of the document, and review them together. Uh, I'll put the other ones. Okay. I just read it. Yeah, so um. the, the things that I identified back then in 2014 were uh, the strong shared common uh, ideals and goals among contributors. So we are clearly a project where everybody well, mostly everybody uh, agrees about um, what we are uh, aiming at. Uh, widespread agreement with foundation documents and procedures. Uh, everybody cares about Debian and likes it. If you talk to the outside world, I mean, outside Dev DevConf, um, lots of people are really big fans of Debian, even when they are not using it. Um, we have a large active community of uh, volunteers. And we value independence uh, uh, quite highly, and we don't compromise uh, with it. So the other ones, uh, I just continue reading, but uh, Neil pointed the uh, social contract uh, as a strength. I think this kind of uh, is included in what's line four on the foundation documents. Um, he isn't here, so he cannot comment. And maybe, maybe you can comment on yours. Oh, uh, mine were. So there was independence, and I scratched it off because it was in yeah. your list already. Uh, there is, uh, so let me show you. History of the project, we've been doing this for over two decades now. We have accumulated lots of experience and showed that our work is relevant to free software and open source <coughs> community. Uh, yeah, it's to make sure that the structure is uh, still working, uh, having an organization with the good processes, and having, uh, I mean, trying to avoid um, organizational blockers inside the project or whatever. The um, large community, so that's obvious. Um, largest number of derivatives. Someone is editing. Yeah, because uh, uh, it's, it's a bit duplicate with line six, but yeah. Line six, yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, largest packages repositories and philosophy of technical excellence and commitment to free software. I don't think it's necessary to command them. They are simple enough. Hmm? So um, what's missing? <laughs> Microphone. Wait, wait for the microphone because we have, we have had several people asking for uh, audio during the, the buff. Uh, I was just, Debian has a strong reputation for stability and it doesn't seem to be captured up there. Yeah. Did you? Uh, I think a strength of the Debian project is also it's non-binding to corporations. Independence. Independence. Okay. Yeah, it was listed already. Actually, you like repeating things. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's just a way to get it in my mind. It's still early morning, no? Yeah. <laughs> is that a sub so do you see it as a sub item of independence? Is it right type? Maybe we could uh, yeah, um, detail in which way we are mm. independent. Mm. Uh, yeah, we are also financially independent. Mm. Not only about our goals, but uh, in our philosophy and our finances. I was going to say, uh, we, we have a huge number of very dedicated developers making it better, but there is large and active community, which I just saw now, maybe dedicated, put that in there or something like that. Because it's amazing what we do. I mean, seriously. Go to the opportunities. Yeah. I think it's easier for the other things so 
So those are one, the ones uh, I identified back then. Uh, one, the first one is uh, the fact that we are one of the few remaining large community projects, like I would say true community projects. There are many other free software projects that are kind of polluted <laughs> by uh, uh, by companies, and I don't see this uh, that uh, well, that much uh, present in Debian. We have, of course, ma many developers uh, employed by companies to work uh, on Debian, but still they mainly contribute. Scroll down. Oh, sorry, I don't have the right resolution. Um, yeah, uh, they, they contribute to Debian with their uh, Debian hat and. Um, not with their, say, collaborator art uh, or whatever other company you can put, uh, uh, or HP or whatever. Uh, the second one was the, um, the, the general post-Snowden hostility towards some big corporate players were clearly uh, seen as uh, being independent for all those big uh, uh, players. Uh, and cloud services, that was Nils? I think it was mine. Uh, Nils, I didn't copy them, uh, because it's only about things and weaknesses. They, he didn't do opportunities. Right. Nils. OK, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, cloud services about, um, so yeah. Zach made a talk at DevConf uh, 14, if I recall correctly, about uh, what is the defini definition of uh, free services, cloud services. And he made a point about all the computing uh, moving from workstations to the cloud. And the uh, question was about uh, how to make sure that people still use free things there, what is about free services, and also how to make sure that we uh, are still relevant. Like, for example, uh, so there is the on-cloud service. I'm not saying particularly that we should uh, package it or something, but just it's something that exists. Uh, it's not packaged today in Debian, and it got removed for some reasons. Uh, so somehow we are not en enabling our users to easily install such software. And they may use uh, another instance uh, publicly available for free. And we don't know how it's uh, installed. Uh, how is uh, their how are uh, their data in the service uh, private or whatever? So the subject was about uh, be made making sure that um, we are working on uh, uh, packaging those uh, services. Also about making sure that Debian is easy, e easy to install on the cloud platforms. Uh, so for now, we still don't uh, have, or maybe we fixed it a bit, but not exactly. Uh, we don't have uh, installers officially promoted by the project for like Amazon, Azure, etc. But are installers needed for Amazon or Azure? You just take image, like AMI or some Google Cloud image or, uh, or uh, Azure image. Yeah. Uh, like image of existing already installed uh, Debian uh, okay, sure. installation and, and you just use it. You About Amazon, for example, I know yeah. that there are multiple AMIs. Yeah. And so which one do you pick? Which uh, one has been promoted by the project, which one you... Uh, we have sure Debian you? images. I'm not sure whether they are officially blessed, but they are named Debian with yeah. Debian Swirl. And, and on stuff. our download page, uh, uh, we yeah. only advertise yeah. uh, ISO images and not the cloud things yet. Oh. Yeah, so... Yeah, they're on the wiki, yeah. but... Okay, so I, when I'm using Debian on EC2 on Amazon, I, I usually click uh, cr create new instance and go to marketplace, uh, put Debian and, uh, and, uh, and, just, uh, and just start this Debian image. So, but at the same time, uh, uh, I was today at the uh, Azure uh, presentation and f 
they uh, collaborate, they are doing something really interesting, like preparing uh, every day, building new uh, Amazon, uh, new, new uh, Debian, uh, uh, Debian images for uh, Stretch, for Wheezy, and for uh, and for Jesse, which is not the case, for example, for uh, for uh, EC2. For EC2, we only get new. Uh, uh, new images when uh, when we release uh, new um, sub-release, for example, 8.5 or something like this. So th this means that we uh, and also w w we don't get uh, relevant testing images in EC2, mm. which means that uh, working with uh, testing some of the new packages on Amazon is quite different, mm. uh, quite difficult. Well, I'm I'm not sure what's the case in uh, with Google. Uh, I think we agree on the technical status. My main action was about this one. It's Perfect. about advertising. Ah, yeah. Uh, so what it's uh, being done, mm -hmm. and make sure it, uh, it's uh, on the official download image, uh, uh, download yeah. page, and not on some wiki page. That okay. Uh, 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 there will be both uh, for the cloud yeah. in uh, two uh, hours or something like this. And I don't know Steve is working on that uh, with his CD image hat. Yeah, to make sure that the cloud uh, OpenStack uh, images are being built by the uh, official yeah. okay. infrastructure. Yeah, that's also the question. I'm not sure what's the current status uh, about that, but uh, at some point uh, it was quite so it was a quite, quite difficult discussion about what does Debian image mean on such public clouds, and what's what are you allowed to include in the image by default, uh, even if it's not in. Uh, I think uh, there is uh, no a page now, which uh, gets the um, uh, the criteria to. Mm. Yeah, but to is respect. it applied to each and every uh, public cloud we have images for? I'm not so sure. I think yeah, I mean, for I now we don't advertise uh, public. Mm. I mean, uh, official images. Mm. So yeah, maybe yeah. maybe it's uh, applied, but. Uh, we don't know yet. Yeah, sure. Maybe I should put the link about that. Mm. Yeah, maybe just go on with because yours, the next item is yours as well. Uh, yeah, the other one. Yeah, it's only not only about French Arabic uh, speaking countries. Actu actually, it's uh, about uh, also Asia. Uh, Africa, user from Africa or Latin countries, etc. Make sure that, for example, we go there, make uh, some talks. Uh, I mean, the project can fund that. Uh, so we have some representativity. We have our uh, project uh, uh, presented in conferences there. I know that a few developers go to uh, FOSS Asia, which is great. And we should be doing that for other conferences. It's a promotion effort, basically. What do you see as the main blocker for improving? Just because we're well, going to conferences is nice, but uh, it seems to me that at least when uh, I got involved, the main way people got involved was by because one of their friends uh, was involved in Debian. Yeah. And, yeah. So it's quite hard to just uh, bootstrap uh, a new geographical location just because you have nothing there. But at least where, where you go, when you go there, you have the opportunity to meet people. Mm -hmm. So you can encourage them to, I mean, talk mm -hmm. to you even by mail then later, um, mm -hmm. mentor them. Yeah. Raphael, I think uh, you are next. Uh, some comments off the internet. Um, Jathan's been making a, uh, quite a few posts. Fortunately, it doesn't seem we're streaming very well at the moment, so it is being recorded. Um, so these may or may not have already been on the uh, agenda. Uh, continuing the definition of free software, uh, promote its work within Debian, uh, retaking Zach's talk in Debian, DC17, Debian in the Dark Ages of free software, uh, yeah, we've covered most of that. Um, considering transform of the official website, Debian.org, uh, with less textual, inter textual interface 
to generate more visual appeal and thereby facilitating access and read content to the general public and potential collaborators. Um, trying to attract more users, new collaborators and developers through the above two points as well as other possible activities. Um, please communicate in a, an opportunity. Yeah. Yep, I think we've covered um, what's been asked for. Could someone with access to IRC please take a few notes about what was said in IRC? It would be helpful just to keep track of things. Okay. Uh, Raphael, maybe mm. on line 39? Well, Damien is, uh, well, Damien at the middleman, basically we are the interface between upstream and users. Uh, there are moves to, uh, with application bundling solution where basically we would not, no longer be needed. Uh, I think it makes sense for us to uh, have our say in this move and maybe embrace it rather than refuse to accept it and continue to keep our influence on the ecosystem uh, there. I took this example. I'm sure there are other, other similar cases that we could find. Uh, well, we have at least uh, our upstream guide, which is sort of uh, our of official rep uh, recommendation for upstream developers. So, Maybe it's not uh, well enough advertised as well. Thank you. Um, so I tried to identify actions. I mean, to do and uh, to act on the opportunities, uh, like doing some advertisement work for the cloud services or images, etc. Uh, do you have? Ideas for the other items on the list. So, for example, for the website, uh, I don't know the status of the www team. Maybe Paul knows about it. It's keeping up. It's keeping up with bug reports and stuff, but not really bigger things. Okay. So basically, nobody is blocking it. We are just looking for volunteers to do the work, like converting the CVS stuff to Git, yeah. which has been on the to-do list for years, but nobody was. Right. Yeah. I I do know that the designer that we recruited this year for DevConf, one of the first things she said is, "Ooh, the Debian website really needs some work." But she has had no time because we've had her working on DevConf, but sure. she might be recruited. Um, we did have a slight problem with getting her to do free software tools, so there's some work there. But, <laughs> but it's possible, and she clearly has skills. So about uh, new contributors from uh, countries outside North America and Europe. Maybe that's something that should be more widely announced. I mean, a sponsorship program for developers, for DDs to go to conferences elsewhere to give talks about Debian, tutorials about Debian packaging. Mm. That would have to be a good use of, uh, would be a good use of uh, Debian money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, do we have enough manpower if we would get, I don't know, a few dozens of contributors at which would need to be mentored and guided, at least initially? It's a luxury prob problem to solve the day we have thousands of contributors. So I don't worry, we will find enough work for them. But sometimes it's, uh, the problem is making sure that uh, people are in touch 
I mean, that's the, 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 yeah, the, the goal of uh, about uh, Ashish's buff, where you have the mentors saying what they are working on in Debian, the mentees saying what are their interests in Debian, and it helped to make people, yeah, make people in touch to start working on it. And I even managed to find new volunteers for the comment team, so it's really working. I mean, it's so the, that group of persons, so maybe should. Um, there was the idea of um, doing a welcome team actually in Debian, which could help people uh, start doing things in Debian. Uh, sometimes people are, don't know who to contact to act on some area of the project. So if you know already the, those guys, and if you know uh, Debian enough, uh, you could do this first step. Related to that, but it might be more for the weaknesses, I think one problematic external uh, impression of what, how you can contribute to Debian is that you absolutely need to be a Debian developer. I think we still haven't managed to fix that. And people all quite often come and say, well, but yeah, you know I'm not a DD, so dot, 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 something, excuses. Uh, but it's mostly our fault too, probably. Can I take issue with that one? Huh? Can I take issue with that one? Uh, I've not been a DD. I'm now a DDU, but uh, uh, non-uploading. But that only happened a week after last year's DevConf. Um, and that was only because people were sort of saying, look, it's about time you actually went through the process. Um, I've been involved in the project for 10 plus years. Um, no real issues whatsoever with contributing without being a DD. Um, it's purely an excuse not to do something. I don't think we disagree. <laughs> okay, I, I heard it as Good. slightly differently, so my apologies. Well, well I'm, I'm, in, I, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm saying there is an external perception that you need to have these ticks in your profile to be able to contribute. Maybe my impression of this external perception is wrong, but I, I'm glad it works. It, it works fine. Uh, there's plenty of people around here today. Um, there's a lot of the local team are not DDs. Um, I've been doing an awful lot on this um, because they've been not roped in, but it's been suggested by friends and fr um, people that have been working on it that this is really cool to work on. And becoming a DD will be further down that line, but it's not it's not necessarily seen as a, a stopping point. Okay. Uh, does uh, someone else want to comment on other opportunities, or should we move to the weaknesses? <laughs> yeah. So uh, just for the this one. Highlighted for the apps, I suggested maybe it could uh, be part of the roadmap because it's a wide archive change and it fits there. Uh, we then we only need a driver for the idea. But yeah. Uh, what about the Libre uh, CPU architectures? Who added, who added that? Okay. I added that. Um. So the, the question actually is actually uh, what uh, from Debian can we do to well, whatever we you want with CPU? And create a port and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, mostly that's referring to RISC-V, but there's also the Super-H architecture that's patents have expired and they're reviving it as an open source architecture. Um, yeah. The problem with RISC-V at the moment is the patches aren't upstream yet and they're still revising the ABIs and stuff like that. Okay. And this one, the Linux desktop. Was it about you? No, it was Odix. The, the desktop. <laughs> was it you? Well, we haven't yet seen that here, so it's still an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's so. never coming, just so you know. Oh, no. Think about mobile instead. It, what's actually happening is the desktop is going away entirely. So don't worry about the year of Linux desktop. Who cares anymore? <laughs> Do worry about mobile, though. Uh, 
Okay. Okay, maybe let's move to witnesses. Uh, maybe yeah. I'm fine with moving to weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already copied yeah. the text. Yeah, so some of the things that were identified in the past is uh, dispersion of manpower, lack of manpower on core things, uh, lack of interest in contributors for non technical tasks. Um, Fragmentation, lack of common technical practices in some areas. The fact, that, the fact that packaging is difficult, this limits the use of packages as a standard interface, a uh, standard software distribution mechanism. Uh, it's difficult to get started uh, as a contributor, lack of sponsor, high requirements. Uh, disconnection from upstream for many packages. Uh, <laughs> Who was uh, that? Uh, Odix? Again? No? Yeah. <laughs> you can <laughs> comment on that if you want. I mean, uh, I think we have uh, a T teacher now who's under 35 since, I mean, it didn't happen since, I don't know, maybe 10 years. So it's a good, si good sign that we have new younger people in the project. Well, it's, it's kind of the usual thing is that it it's common for us to think that we're getting old and we're maybe not looking correctly and we might just be missing that the young guard is actually coming and there are actually people that are young and contribute. But I still think the first part of the sentence that the age average is growing stands and that mm. might be a weakness. I mean, it used to be a project for the 20-ish people and now it's, yeah. We have a bar that closes at 11 and we are happy with it. <laughs> yeah. Speaking, speaking from another open source project that went through this same process, I can tell you it is a problem. If you don't welcome the new generations, it means in another 10 years you're dead. Yeah. Uh, but this actually ties into the earlier thing. We're talking about small events in regional areas. Mm -hmm. and it's not even, not even as big as a mini DebConf, even smaller. Um, Ashish did something awesome, which was Open Hatch comes to campus. Uh, we would, he would connect with local user groups and run. It doesn't take even, you know, maybe if one DD could go, or even just someone who kind of knows a little bit about Debian could go. Um, you can spin up these very small university events that get university students excited uh, about the project. And that's probably the best way to get very young people involved. Uh, I got also in touch with uh, with my academic background in the past uh, with uh, let me say a professor teaching teachers uh, who wanted to do a, a short internship and we could have a program uh, within Debian uh, for to have people from uh, I don't know colleges or whatever to work on small tasks and uh, could be a way to get in. Uh, hello. Okay, uh, talking about universities, I remember when I was student we had some uh, Linux user group locally. Now when I'm speaking with people who still keep up with my former university now it's dot net uh, user group some uh, mobile programming uh, some gaming but uh, i'm not sure if linux user group even exists at my former faculty so that that might be the sign of, of the times changing and that might be also the one of the reasons that we don't have new blocks because b because my, my first uh, contact with Linux was at the university and we, we were exchanging some ideas, we were exchanging some, uh, uh, we were discussing about distros flame, flaming mm. there. But I think so we also have to update our um, uh, speech when we are trying to reach out to new users and communities because we always start by saying I could do, for example, a packaging tutorial, but people are not interested necessarily in uh, packaging and we have to update our speech to find out new interesting tasks to do in the project, uh, which would be appealing and interesting for young people. Yeah. Mm. 
so if if there aren't Linux users groups on campuses anymore, is it because we it's already a done thing and it's in the people are using it in the engineering programs, or is it not? I, yeah, I'm old enough to have a son in college, and the uh, connecting his computer to the internet, you needed Windows or or Macintosh. You know, if you wanted to run Linux, you had to run your own network. Um, so, but I know a lot of engineering programs are already using Linux. Um, so, you know, it's it's not only about the users groups. It's you know, do we have um, attention of the faculty and in incorporating Linux into the um, into the curriculum? Yeah, I think that we are at uh, at, the, at the bottom of the curve currently because I think that uh, systems oper operating traditional operating systems courses are becoming a bit less relevant because nobody well we there's a, not so much of a need for people with uh, such skills uh, on the market at least probably less than uh, ten years ago because everybody uses uh, Linux and it just works. Uh, and at the same time, uh, there are not so many people who identify the need for um, uh, DevOps or managing large infrastructure skills, which are more a mix of system programming and uh, sysadmining. And so nobody is really teaching about uh, those skills at the moment. We can hope that this will change just because uh, and many large companies run really large infrastructures and there's a need for people to, to do that and clearly that's something that is quite hard to find on the job market uh, today. Okay, so uh, if I may a little bit play with your, your, and your idea. Uh, so it seems like we have two problems. One is the lack of role models of somebody who, whom to aspire, like faculty using Linux and showing that you can do cool things. And also lack of view, like Linux now is seen as operating system, yet another operating system like, like Mac or Windows mm -hmm. or whatever. And it, it mostly works. So it's not, uh, it's not seen as students uh, and new fresh blood is not uh, feeling the need to tinker with it and from this tinkering we had we had new new contributors so so we would need to find some idea to to freshen this tinkering i don't know maybe returning a little bit to the cloud maybe show them uh, uh, how to manage some few instances on the cloud i know i recently got email from google that they are providing some uh, some credits to run uh, some Google uh, Cloud uh, on in academia. So maybe get from this angle. Because when it comes to, to the new packaging, I'm not sure if that's really pressing issue. We have over 50,000 packages and in my opinion, more, more problematic now are orphaned or not really well maintained packages. Staying with your academia um, theme, uh, certainly in the UK, we're finding a lot of uh, the colleges are demanding submission of uh, tasks and reports in a particular system, in a particular format, and they're all demanding the, the you know, document in Word format or whatever. And there seems to be a lot of effort has gone in to prevent it being submitted from um, for, for, from anything other than uh, an Office 365 generated device. Um, almost as if um, and I were being carefully pushed out uh, deliberately. Um, you know, the, the universities don't want to, to take a submission of an electronic document from, from OOO or, um, or, or LibreOffice. Even for PDFs? They don't accept other things, I mean, like PDFs or...? Um, no. Um, the, 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 they've now got their plagiarism. Um, certainly um, in the two universities I've, I've had contact with recently, um, demanded demand document in uh, a Word format. Um, they run it through their anti-plagiarism scripts 
Um, so it's expecting oh, okay. uh, yeah. something particular. It then goes and processes it. Um, mm. So sense. what you've actually got there is freedom is being constrained intentionally to, uh, mm. to, to to provide a service which you must go down a particular route. So they're expecting the students to be running on 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 Windows box or running on Mac. Yeah. So it's a tooling problem on the university. Yes. Yeah. And since their budgets are getting smaller at the moment. Well, yeah, budgets being, a bit, budgets being constrained, but of course, yeah. freedom is also being constrained as a result. Sure. Still, I think this issue is a bit different from the one before. The fact that people cannot uh, use uh, Linux-based systems uh, at university is one problem. The fact that um, the university isn't teaching that much about the importance of uh, Linux-based uh, systems or Unix uh, systems is another issue. I mean, so the one you mentioned applies to everybody at university. The second one he applies to computer science students. And in terms of recruiting contributors, we mostly care about the second group of people. I mean, with all the, yeah, it's still. I mean, <laughs> If it's going to grow, we're going to need to appeal to more than just um, the, our, our, our potential developers. We're going to have to appeal to our end users, and our end users need to be everybody else. So it's a larger sub it's a larger group of people to appeal to. Um, can uh, Rafael comment on the before the last one and clear decision processes? Or Oh, sorry. Really? <laughs> yeah, Madoc, sorry. Um, well, kind of assumed that it's a little bit self-explanatory, especially the first one. Um, but I guess it's, it's the huge picture or um, circle around um, how do we progress, how do we make progress in the project. And uh, often there come um, some uh, controversial decisions that need to be made. And uh, some teams are really good at doing that now, uh, communicating up front and then making the decision and uh, just moving forward with it. But uh, it's, it's not clear how that works, how it's expected from everyone in the project. And for instance, if, uh, if I wanted to drive a certain change in the project, it's not clear um, how I even would get to the point of identifying who can make a decision without going to a GR. Um, and I guess it ties in with the second point that I made there, um, the reluctantness towards um, entrepreneurial initiatives, um, which may well fail. Uh, I have this feeling that in, in Debian, we're we are all very protective of what we have, of our brand, of our project, of our pride and, and everything. And yet at the same time, if we don't take risks and try some stuff out, um, we, we're probably not going to be able to advance a whole lot, and I've, I've noticed a very strong decline in innovation capacity in the last uh, decade in, in Debian, and maybe that's partly related here. So um, sort of embracing this, uh, this sentiment that uh, it's okay to try something, and if it fails, then we'll just you know, pick up the pieces and keep going, rather than uh, f fearing that it might negatively affect the brand Debian. Because mm. if, if we're perceived to the outside as a, as a as an innovative project that tries stuff, um, I think that's going to be um, a better image yeah, to yeah. Debian, even if some of them fail, than if it's a sort of stagnant project. So is it about promotion of individual projects? Well, pretty much anything. Um, it could. I, I was thinking when I wrote this, I was thinking about the partners program, for instance, um, where some of this entrepreneurial freedom would be um, very helpful to have, but I'm sure that it applies to many other things, you know, events, um, probably less so the technical stuff. I mean, you're not going to be like entrepreneurial about the technical innovation in some ways, um, or we, we do have processes there, but there's a lot more around, like take for instance, uh, uh, website design, yeah? I mean, one of the reasons why we, we do have an updated website, it looks better than 10 years ago, but uh, um, there have been a couple of people trying to like, you know, make it mobile friendly, responsive design and so on and so forth. And while I'm sure that like, a lot of people will be in favor of that, the sentiment in the project, if I had to describe it like that, is more like 
um, very, very skeptical of the whole thing. And uh, so therefore, when somebody approaches this, they go like, ah, you know, I don't really want to touch this project even with a broomstick because I'm afraid that I'm going to get backlash. Whereas what we should have is, is a, a community where if somebody says, I want to work on the website, everybody goes like, yay, that's awesome. We're looking forward to having your designs and then we'll provide feedback and so on. Rather than, ah, you need to, no, you know. You are very conservative with, with uh, what works already. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that, that's also good. I'm not saying that we should like start failing yeah, on sure, everything, sure. right? Mm. <laughs> But it's true that we, when we have new initiatives, we tend to ask too much questions that uh, eventually uh, discourage the person who was volunteering for it. Yeah. Instead of, uh, for example, making a test bed so, so they can work on and show it to the people. They, yeah. uh, but failure and experimentation should also follow with some post-mortem or uh, assuming that it failed or or post some roadmap for doing this. Like, for example, we have uh, Debian Droid, which was the re result of uh, Google Summer of Code two or three years ago. But student finished this, and this application was not touched in three years already. So it's now obsolete. It uh, doesn't uh, display correctly some of the bugs. Uh, and it has only below uh, 100 users. So when you put Debian into Google Play Store, it's one of first hits and it's not really good. So uh, should we try to do something with it, like rewrite it with modern Android uh, uh, guidelines? Or uh, I guess this goes a little bit with uh, our social media presence or because in my opinion, if it would work, it could be good, uh, good first point for somebody, some Debian user to subscribe to some bugs, to, so, to, uh, to show what are the version of, of some interesting packages, uh, w and at the same time a little bit uh, lessen our burden on, on web page. Because if, some, if somebody can look it on mobile application, then then it's more modern, more hip or something. Any other comments? Okay. Should I scroll down a bit? bit? So it's okay. Yeah. So, um, innovation capacity decline. Sorry? I think answering one of the threads here is quite hot place. So, looking at the first thread is, uh, or second is the end of the desktop, and we already talked about cloud images. Under opportunities, I think we should talk about Debian on devices um, as a real opportunity. Um, if you look at BeagleBoard, you look at Raspberry Pi. They're, they're both using Debian today. Um, I think that's an opportunity. Um, you know, if, if you look at the display case out front, you see all those robots. I'm willing to bet they're running something, some type of embedded Linux. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if you really think the desktop is, is diminishing, you know, you have two fronts to focus on, the cloud and devices. Um, so we should really be looking at both of them. Okay, we have only a few minutes uh, left. Does someone want to comment on uh, some of the threads, inspiration of Thread Act? <laughs> Rafael, do you want to comment about that? <laughs> we have insider information that we... <laughs> I was discussing with a Red Hat guy who told me, well, they handle many parts of the lower stack GCC and well, also upper stack in GNOME, everything. And if Red Hat were to die, we 
we would have many problems because well, Linux would work much worse. Uh, you mentioned, for example, that uh, uh, well, Red Hat does a lot of laptop testing, and many of the drivers actually do work because Red Hat engineers fixed them. Uh, I don't know how much truth it is, but uh, I think it's believable that uh, Red Hat's involvement there is important. And uh, well, uh, so it's a l sort of a l not very realistic threat, but still it may be nice to have more Debianish people involved in the lower stack level where Red Hat is heavily involved. So that if Red Hat di disappears, we, we have people left. Uh, I want to comment on the, on the containers as a solution to deploy applications and services. Sorry, what? Okay. Uh, which is uh, identified as a, as a threat, uh, but you could also look at it as an opportunity. Uh, at work, uh, we are maintaining so uh, a Debian derivative internally, uh, based on stable. So we have the old stable releases, as well as testing. And many users are asking for uh, a backport of some applications from release to an, uh, an earlier release. And uh, what we found uh, simpler is to have some process, some uh, programs, to easily uh, get applications run in containers uh, from uh, newer stable releases. So it's technically very easy. You just have to install a shoot, install the packages there, and make uh, some scripts to run the application. Uh, so it's easy to do, and uh, it's uh, a way to say to people, okay, so if you manage to package it in, like in testing, you are not uh, forced to wait until it's released as stable to use it. You can use it from today. And we don't have such tools yet, I mean Debian. If so if we, one minute, okay. I don't have anything to say more about that. But just work on some tools for con uh, around containers. It's a new technology, and we didn't uh, take uh, advantage yeah, of it. We are only really looking at it as a threat. But it could be an opportunity to make things simpler to distribute. I think that generally we are not really em embracing all the new ways to distribute yeah. software uh, up to their potential. I mean, one thing that is clearly changing is that uh, people want to use different versions of software and just use backports and everything. And backports are not really uh, a solution because uh, most of the packages in Debian don't have backports. Uh, one idea I've been playing for, for I've been I've had in my head for a long time is uh, uh, trying to do uh, automatic backporting. Uh, I wonder how many of our packages would just work if we just build them uh, on the for the target distribution and provide them as a untested stuff to users. Uh, most of our users just uh, do that from source, and we are out of time, so I'm stopping there. <laughs> but that's something that uh, well, if you're interested in working on that, uh, I'm interested in talking to you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you.